How to be as focused as Bruce Lee? Derek Johnson is mastering the art of body, mind and soul. The fitness and life coach has been on big stages. He learned from nobody else than Tony Robbins and Les Brown and even got his pro coaching certificate from these two legends. In his early age, he got into modeling and was also very successful with it. That's the reason why one of the biggest model agencies, Elite Model Management, signed him. How the army was a deep impact and how it was growing up in a German-American family? He's sharing it now here exclusively with you guys, coming up now. Hey Superstar, you can be proud of yourself. You found this channel because you want more out of your life. Normal is not in your dictionary and you know you can get whatever you dream about. Less talking, more action. My name is Anna Rousseau, your new success host. Welcome to my podcast, Luxury Problems. Welcome to another dope episode this time i have somebody here derek johnson is his name he lives in tampa in florida we know each other now for we have to talk about since when it feels like forever but i feel like since i have instagram (laughs) yes six years oh my god and he is a fitness coach and life coach and a um, army veteran And I have the pleasure today to interview you, ask you a bunch of questions because your journey is just mind-blowing. Since I know you, you just like level up, level up, level up all the time, but you're still so humble and grounded because you know, like, you know your values and you know what you still want to achieve. And that's just beautiful. And I think a lot of people, they want to know how you did that being a fitness coach and life coach. Welcome to my podcast. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me on. I of appreciate course. It. I mean, if not you, who else, right? If I love to interview people that I actually know, people that yeah, I've exactly. seen myself, how their journey was. And I saw it with you. And I think a lot of people can get inspired, especially if they want to be in the field of coaching and fit, fitness as well. And yeah, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, and you mean your name, Derek Johnson. Okay, yeah, <laughs> so I, I grew up in Germany. So being, my father was in the army and my mom, she's German. So we grew up in Germany, bounced around. My dad retired and then we moved to Florida and then stayed in Florida, in North Florida, did college and everything. And then moved down to Miami for a couple of years. And then after college, I got into modeling. Mm-hmm. So I was modeling in Miami for a few years and it was fun great experience but it was not as fulfilling as helping people Mm -hmm. so helping people reach their mental health goals their fitness goals or even just simply with their confidence if somebody's like hey i want to get a promotion i want to get a raise i want to do this so helping people just get happier to hit their goals that was Mm -hmm. more fulfilling than modeling modeling Mm -hmm. is definitely fun but it just wasn't at least with me just wasn't as fulfilling there's nothing like seeing your mom happy that you're on a billboard or in a commercial. That's cool. <laughs> She's like, that's my son <laughs> to all her girlfriends. That's, that's my son. son. <laughs> that's my cousin. That's awesome. But at least with me, there's no feeling like getting that text, that call or that message saying, man, you helped change my life or you helped me get over depression, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. And it's just awesome because that ripple effect that happens Mm -hmm. when she's in a better headspace or he is they help their family and their friends and it just keeps it just spread 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 exactly that's amazing well i have a few questions for you i hope you're ready (laughs) and um yeah i would like to know so when you think back when you were like a little boy like around between five to ten years old and you know how it is when i'm grown i want to work as a firefighter i want to do this did you have like this typical kids dream when it comes down to jobs so i my first dream was fbi i always <laughs> watch criminal investigation shows and movies and i was like oh i want to go to the crime scene mm-hmm. see the body see this and that connect the dots and do all that and it was interesting but what i learned is in school as a kid playing sports sports was a big part of my life i would just I think it's a gift just naturally good at being a leader when it came to whatever sport it was and then that just was that trigger where i was like well i want to lead people and help people Mm -hmm. so it started with sports and martial arts so like i would teach 
the kids' martial arts classes, all the white belts and all that, mm -hmm. and I would teach them. And then in high school, I was in Army ROTC, and I would like help my soldier. And it was just always a thing where I felt, I was like, all right, I think I'm gonna be, gonna be happier helping people more than going this path. Yeah. So that was my first goal, but then from there, I was like, I wanna speak, do something with fitness, and do something like where I'm just helping people. Yeah. And that's how I felt then. But in the FBI, hard. you kind of help people too, right? Somehow. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> definitely, definitely. It, 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 it just changed. The older I got, I was like, wait, I'm really good at this. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it and I can turn this into a career mm -hmm. and then went from there. Awesome. So it's always interesting what happens on the journey. Always. Like, and everybody has their chapters and there's always a certain chapter for certain times. And probably the time when you were modeling there, you didn't have the right mindset to say, hey, I just want to help people and I want to coach people. It was about your personal journey to figure out, hey, what am I really good at? What is fun? What I can exactly. turn into a business? Yeah, and, and the best part about the modeling journey is that you work in different states, different countries, you fly around, you meet people, mm -hmm. and that right there, same thing with the military, traveling the world is just, I think it's a blessing for anybody that has the ability, whether it's a career or with life, or to travel with their family. Mm -hmm. I would suggest that everybody travel to countries they haven't been, because mm -hmm. that right there gives people that perspective of, whoa, there's a lot to do out there yeah. and they can learn. So I think that's what holds most people back is they haven't had the ability, whether it's a career, family, or just vacation, mm -hmm. to meet different people, different viewpoints. And that just expands the mind because we all know somebody that we love them, but they've been in the same place mm -hmm. for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, but it's because they're in their same city like their whole life. So yeah. that's why they're, the way they're thinking is more narrow and not saying we're above them, but that's just how it is with people that stay in the same area. So yeah. And we have one thing in common. We both have German. So that's why I know people where I'm coming from in my little village, most of those people, they're not really having this travel mindset and they still in this little area where they have always been, but they never really, they don't even feel this urgency to travel the world they're like oh i'm good <laughs> I, i feel exactly. comfortable here yeah for sure I, i think what happens with some people not that everybody has to travel or wants to some people mm -hmm. just don't want to but i think deep down everybody needs that because yeah it sparks your imagination you learn mm -hmm. and it's kind of like the the unknown mm -hmm. you don't know what you don't know so it's like somebody might be like i don't like airplanes or i don't like this i don't know i don't know i don't know but once they get into that new environment mm -hmm. 100 percent of the time they're like oh Whoa. my god these people in japan are amazing <laughs> or these people i went to hawaii i ate this food i heard the music and you can't have that feeling watching mm -hmm. a travel youtube video or exactly movies. yeah those experiences change somebody's life and mind forever mm -hmm. because they're like wow i met amazing people i learned some new music language ate some new food, mm -hmm. had this and this, and then when they go back home, their vision is just like out there. We're like, wow, so there's way more. I've seen things that I only dreamed about or saw in movies. It's yeah. real and it's tangible. Like I could touch that building that I used to look at as a picture. Yeah, exactly. So it's just those adrenaline rush moments. Mm -hmm. You could not have those without having those experiences. Exactly. That reminds me back of the time when I was just watching Hollywood movies and then actually I yes. came here the first time I was walking on walk of fame i feel like that's how i manifested my dream even more intense because i actually could see and feel and touch and walk on it and yeah. instead of just watching the movies like okay please i want to manifest hollywood <laughs> yeah exactly and you think about it so much that when it happens it's like you did it already mm -hmm. because you envision you're like all right i'm gonna walk this way i'm gonna wear this out for i'm gonna do this the sun is gonna be shining and you have all the pieces or all of the um all the fine things that you want to see. Yeah. So like use all your senses. Mm -hmm. The wind is going to hit me. I'm going to see this. I'm going to feel that. I'm going to do this. And mm -hmm. when you put all your senses to that, when it happens, you're like, whoa, this felt like it happened before. Yeah. So you probably have, have an experience like that with like a deja vu. Like I would love to work with this brand and do mm -hmm. this and do this. And you thought about it and then it happened. And then like you took a picture. So that's one thing that I would do with modeling is that I would imagine being with this brand or with this agency. And then when it would happen, I would take a picture and I would post it for like inspiration on social media, but it was more so for myself mm -hmm. because in my head, I was like, I pictured myself taking that picture five years ago, writing this caption and I, and I did it. So mm -hmm. it was adrenaline rush for me. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, it was cool to see, but it was more so that 
Holy shit moment. <laughs> I did what I thought about. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And as soon as you finally, like, it, it's like scary in the same time. You feel like great because you're like, oh my God, damn, I achieved that. I'm like, whoa, like actually whatever I had first here and I just had the thought, it became reality. What can I do next? Like, what's the next thing? And then you like are in a great mindset and in a great flow because just things start to happen naturally. Yeah, exactly. And it makes you wonder what's next, what's next. And that's the best feeling because if somebody doesn't have that feeling, then it's just same thing. Oh, it's Monday. Gotta go to work. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait for Friday. And it's just like a cycle yeah. where people, they kind of just shut themselves off or they just like go. Mm -hmm. And they get excited for the birthdays, for the weekend, for the Friday movie, yeah. like for like normal stuff, like which is cool. Everybody yeah. likes those things. But it's like, what else? Mm -hmm. What else? Because mm -hmm. when somebody's laying in bed and it's 1, 1 a.m. in the morning, they're not thinking about work. They're thinking about, man, it would be nice if I could travel. Man, what if I went in this career? What if I did this? Mm -hmm. What if should have, could have, would have? Yeah, so you never know. I totally, people just try and just yeah. go out there and then exactly. just see what happens. You never know. Exactly. So how you think society and the environment about everybody is important for your goals and your dreams? So with the environment, I totally believe that just like the saying goes, you are just like the five people that you hang out with the most and you'll predominantly end up like them. Mm -hmm. But if somebody's, if somebody opens up their circle and tries to see, all right, are these people holding me back or do they give me energy? Do they mm -hmm. take my energy? Mm -hmm. Or do I need a whole new group of friends? Not saying we're better than them, but we don't want to be stuck. Mm -hmm. So I would look at it in terms of environment is making sure that the people you talk to are excited, have good energy, you're like, hey, I'm doing this, I got a promotion, I got a raise, just went back to school, I just did this, what are you doing, what are your goals? Mm -hmm. Those kind of friendships or group chats are the best because when you're not confident one day, your friend is winning. When yeah. she's not confident, he's winning and everybody's spreading that energy, mm -hmm. which is empowering. Yeah. But most, most friendships are just like, hey, what are we doing Friday? Hey, what are we doing Saturday? Mm -hmm. Hey, what are we doing next weekend? Yeah. Hey, how's work? Oh, you know. So it's just like, it's a different conversation. Mm -hmm. So Everybody's just basically complaining just about their job, right? Sorry, what did you say? I said most of the people, they're just trying to complain about their jobs, how bad it is, yeah, and exactly. it's, how crazy you know, they want to go. Escape from their Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. where it's sad, but nowadays there's so many opportunities there. I mean, prime example, this can change your life. Yeah. So people use this just to text and have fun, but they don't realize the power of it. Yeah. Derek is just showing his phone for those who are not watching the YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> this thing, the phone thing. Yeah, I mean, back then when we were kids, uh, that was, I mean, I had like an emergency phone. My dad, dad actually gave me a... a a mobile phone when I was 11 which and nobody in my school had a phone with 11 but because I grew up with my dad and he had like f to work full time he's like this is a phone I put you like 10 10 euro on there and make sure yeah. it lasts for the next three months <laughs> okay yeah. exactly. I was so happy like to send one short message uh, on the thing and um, yeah so Definitely, we have to take advantage from everything that we have now that our parents didn't have. Oh yeah, 100%, because we can change your life with it. And one of my favorite quotes is actually by Tony Robbins is, he says that there are no lack of resources, there's just lack of resourcefulness. Mm -hmm. Meaning like, we have all these options, we have Wi-Fi, we have phones, we have laptops. Most people have like five devices that they could use. Yeah. But they just use it for entertainment and mm -hmm. for fun, not to, Research, read, learn, create opportunities, yeah. just anything like that. Mm -hmm. You can literally get on YouTube or Google and learn something new within yeah. one week. Yeah. You can be confident doing that thing just, mm -hmm. and it's free. Yeah. YouTube and Google, and then from there you can say, all right, I'll learn the basics. Who else is an expert that I could pay to learn more and just keep going from yeah. there. And next thing you know, within six months, this person can have a totally different life. But it all goes back to resourcefulness. It's mm -hmm. like, do they want it or they're just, just going to say, I don't know. It was easy for Anna. It and it's for and it's for free. You have to keep that in mind. All that stuff is for free. Yeah, exactly. 100%. So if somebody, it's like two ways to look at it. If somebody's going to look for a problem, they're going to find a problem. If somebody's mm -hmm. going to look for an excuse, they'll find an excuse. 
and then you, me, other people that dominate their path, they're looking for a door or opportunity. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, there's something in the way, I'm still gonna make it happen. Yeah. Like, I don't care, no options mentality. So not everyone has that, but I think the way to create that is to get more competitive. So like if somebody played sports, they can take that same mentality to life, to business, mm -hmm. to anything, yeah. at their company, whoever they work for, but it's to take that same mentality to be competitive, to want to get better and driving force and push, 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 because life is too short just to hope that something's going to change. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel so important also the way how you grow up as a kid. I mean, some kids, they have parents, they're like, oh, whatever. And they, they're the, I'm not saying wrong role models, but it could be easier for a kid growing up, learning it the right way. And besides having yes. both parents working in a nine to five and always complaining about the Monday to Friday, because it goes so deep in your subconscious mind that you actually really think, oh damn, I have to like really do this nine to five, Monday to yeah, Friday. You, you think that's all there is because you don't know what you don't know. And that goes back to the, the power of right now. I mean, it's 2021, so you can get on the internet and learn so much. But mm -hmm. When it comes to who you're getting your information from, that's the scary part. So let's just say, for example, I grew up in Florida and one of the cities I used to live was close to Alabama, so racism was real. So mm -hmm. with this example, I'm half African-American, half German. So the example is if little Jimmy is in elementary school mm -hmm. and he's taught to hate black people or hate Mexicans or whatever it is, Jimmy's not wrong. I can't be mad at Jimmy. Jimmy learned what his dad taught him, his uncle, his grandpa, his great grandpa. So mm -hmm. he just continues what the family tradition was. Mm -hmm. So like it's sad, but that's why a lot of people are stuck. So same thing if the parents are like, well, only lucky people can do this. Mm -hmm. Only some people can do that. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to put themselves in a box. Yeah. So I think a lot of families put themselves and their kids in the box, mm -hmm. which is sad. And if the kid wants to break out of the box then they're called crazy, weird and all that stuff so but but the scary part is some people especially those who like to point their finger on others like to say oh i never knew it better my parents taught me my parents did that but it's about taking responsibility and some people just like the fact being in a victim mode and being always like oh but you know i didn't know and those people and these people i had to blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, and, and one big issue is that a lot of people don't know themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's like if they ask themselves. So for example, we won't go deep on religion or anything, but just let's just say somebody grew up with a Christian family. If you ask them, it's like, are you a Christian because of your family and you mm -hmm. grew up in that church? Or is that your decision? If that's your decision, awesome. But just asking some people that, they get uncomfortable, no matter what it is. Yeah, they that's get like, offensive. You know, because every one of your family and friends, yeah. they tell you that's what you should believe mm -hmm. or your favorite news station or your favorite celebrity. Like, <laughs> if you like these people, awesome. But are those your ideas and beliefs? Yeah. And that's the scary part of it nowadays. People don't know themselves. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they, they just follow what other people are doing instead of saying, you know what? Sad I don't truth. agree with this. And this is what I stand for and believe. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go this way. And that's the scary part. But yeah. it's just so common because people are, there's a quote, I forget who said it, I'll get back to you on that, but the quote is, adults are like walking around with their umbilical cords hanging out, waiting for somebody to plug into. So adults are, they have their, so you can imagine an adult walking with their umbilical cord hanging yeah. out, they're waiting for somebody to plug it into, yeah. to tell them what to do, how yeah. to think, how to act. Yeah. So like that's how society is, they're mm -hmm. looking for like a leader. So like one of the studies that was done was in New York City, some psychologists, they did a exercise where they mm -hmm. said, hey, We're going to go to a coffee shop. So they got like 10 people together and they said, Here, here's what we're going to do. You're going to cross this street and you're going to cross the street and see how many people follow you. So scenario one, cross the street nervous. Mm -hmm. So they get to the street and the psychologists are in the coffee shop taking notes. Mm -hmm. And the person like looks left, looks really nervous. They only wanted two people follow. And they go back in the coffee shop and like, okay. This time, I want you to walk across the street super confident, like you're on a mission, you're late to a meeting, you're just focused. That same pe person and the same other people, they cross the street confidently, almost everybody crossed the street with them, and it was a red light, so they were jaywalking. And so that right there is a simple analogy, but it shows 
people are looking for a leader, for somebody to guide them, to tell mm -hmm. them what to do, or to say, hey, Anna looks certain, she looks confident. I trust her, I'm gonna follow her path or follow mm -hmm. her lead. So mm -hmm. it's interesting how that works from something as simple as walking across the street when there's a red light. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna stand there and wait 15 minutes until it's green. If there's no car coming, I'm going, and yeah. if you wanna follow me, cool. If not, I'm gonna continue. So yeah. it's like the same analogy. Mm -hmm. But that means like you have to have a strong mindset as well. And I feel like you, have that already like it's in your nature but in the same time i think you learned that a lot also at the military right yeah definitely definitely and i think everything is everything is just experience mm -hmm. some people like me i used to be shy i used to be really quiet as a kid and mm -hmm. all that i was always nervous and because mm -hmm. like i didn't know i was like all right should i hang out with these kids hang out with those kids do i do this do i do that? i'm like and then one day something clicked and i was like I don't have to fit in. Mm -hmm. Like in American schools, you have jocks, which is just the athletes. I played sports, but I didn't really care to hang out with them. And yeah. I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to just sit with that African-American friend. I'm not going to sit with just the white people or just with the Mexican. <laughs> but my lunch table in high school was everybody. It's like mm -hmm. black, white, Asian, gay, straight, mm -hmm. Christian, whatever. Yeah, Hindu, all kinds of people were at the thing. And we got along great. That's amazing. And we all saw the world differently yeah. than everybody else that hangs out with their same kind of people. Exactly. They're going to have the same view and they don't grow. They just stay Exactly. In they never grow because you learn so much from different cultures already. Yeah, 100%. So what was your biggest loss and win in the same time? You know these situations where you feel like my whole world breaks down, but in the same time a new door opens and you gain something that's even... 100 times better than what you had before. I would say that there are many, but I would just say like a personal one would be, there's one year modeling where I was crushing it and just in terms of modeling industry, anybody that hasn't been in it, it's never about you. It's about what the client wants. Mm -hmm. So in that year, a lot of clients or people of my agent who connect me with, they were looking for somebody that had my look. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so much about Derek, It was, hey, we have this campaign and we're looking for a mixed person that looks like this. I walk in, they're like, oh, he fits the part. Mm -hmm. And it just kept happening and happening. And that year I crushed it. The very next year, I probably got three modeling gigs. So the money went from up here mm -hmm. to almost nothing. Mm -hmm. But that was a perfect time because I just worked on myself and focused on business and was like, all right, what can I do that I have more control of? Mm -hmm. So that journey, living in a city where I didn't know anybody and then like going from making great money to no money and then like working at restaurants, doing all the side jobs, doing all this. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, man, what am I doing? Like, this is not me. I'm not going to be some guys just working in a restaurant, waiting and mm -hmm. hoping to the next modeling gig. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is not me. So that experience of learning and diving deep and taking advantage of figuring out what the passion was and then going all out was definitely one of the best experiences mm -hmm. of going from a high to a very low while most people would just move back to their hometown but yeah. i was like that's that's not an option i'm <laughs> no. not moving back to my small hometown. what could people say they, they win mean, no they ego is exactly. bigger pride is bigger <laughs> exactly. so I, i didn't go home because i knew i was going to figure it out and i figured it out and then life became an amazing thing so it's really interesting how that works but it's just the will to not quit and just continue even if you don't know how you're going to get to that point mm -hmm. you'll figure it out on the way yeah it's like trusting yourself exactly and if somebody has faith then believing in yourself whatever power power they believe in but just continue and saying mm -hmm. i'm right here i want to get to point b i don't know how the hell i'm going to get there yet but i'm <laughs> going to figure it out and i'll mm -hmm. do whatever it takes awesome and yeah i think it's just experience absolutely so with all these um all the knowledge that you gained over the past years and um, my question is Do you feel or do you believe in something bigger? I mean, in a religious way or in a spiritual way? Because not everybody has that mindset growing up that there's a higher power guiding them. Or some people, they're super religious, but they lose their spiritual awareness like during processes because of they're upset and they're mad um, because certain things happen in their life. And they're like, there's no God or no Buddha, no Allah, no universe. And yes. how is it for you? Is something guiding you? How do you um, keep yourself going? 
So I keep myself going by, I totally believe that it is important for everyone to believe in something. Not saying that one thing is better than the other, people have opinions. Me personally, I just never really cared for religious or religions because mm -hmm. of history, just a lot of the biggest wars were started from religion, mm -hmm. but we won't go deep in that. But <laughs> at the end of the day, it's just believing in something. So whether it's a God, whether it's Allah, or whether it's the universe, but I just personally believe that we're here for a reason and we all have potential. You listening right now or watching, you have potential. It's just figuring out why am I here? Mm -hmm. Am I here to help people? Okay, I'm here to help people. One, what can I help them with? This and this. What am I good at? What? And then like figuring out from there why we're here and what we enjoy doing and seeing if you can create a career, a business, anything like that, a side gig that becomes a company, anything like that. It's just figuring out the purpose. And I truly believe that everyone loves helping someone. So if we can figure out how to help someone doing something that we enjoy, then that gives somebody a rush mm -hmm. rather than just working somewhere for a paycheck just to pay bills. But going back to the spiritual, yes, I totally believe that there's a high power. Like me personally, I believe in God and also believe in the universe that you're guided and like we're here for a reason. But it's also self-awareness when you know yourself and you can hear, feel your conscience say, don't go this way or yes, go this way mm -hmm. or watch out. <laughs> she's crazy or he's crazy or hey he's he's evil like we have everybody's blessed with that thing yeah but i think a lot of people overshadow their conscious mm -hmm. their consciousness with drugs like alcohol like all this other stuff that's just distraction mm -hmm. but when you can get in tune with yourself then you can get in touch with your higher self connect to god connect to the universe and just go from there but yes i totally do believe that there's high power at play but it's all about somebody being aware and believing enough but also doing their part mm -hmm. So like, for example, in, in the South, in America, there's thousands of churches, but a lot of people that are always in church, they usually stay in that same bubble because it's like, that's all they do. And then anybody that's going further, they're kind of like, oh yeah, that must be lucky for them or they were mm -hmm. just blessed. Or there's people that just hope, wish and pray all the time, but they don't take action. Yes. They're like, yeah. God is going to bless me with this. He's going to bless me with that. But if you ask them, Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so you said um, it's all about um, taking the action. It's not you can sit in your room, meditate all day and hope and pray. But if you're not going out there pursuing your dreams, nothing going to happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and that's the sad part is that some people hope, wish and pray. Those things are good mm -hmm. where they visualize and meditate and all that. But then I'm just a realist. What did you do the last 24 hours? Show me what time you wake up. What do you do from that time to this time? What did you do the last two weeks? What did you do the last 90 days? Mm hmm. And talking about those things makes most people uncomfortable because mm -hmm. it's like you are where you are because of what you did yesterday in the last 10 years and yeah. it shouldn't be surprising mm -hmm. but that's just like a honest blunt way and a lot of people are like no it's because of this and this it's like no we just have to look at it real like you are successful because of what you did the past five years or you're not successful because you wasted your time mm -hmm. the past five years so yeah i think sometimes looking at only spiritual only religious things holds a lot of people back because they gets too sucked into those things mm -hmm. where they don't take action on the right now. Yeah, exactly. Or they're too worried about the afterlife. Like, I want to, will I end up here? Mm -hmm. Or will I end up here? It's mm -hmm. like, that, that is great to believe in, but what are you doing today and right now to yeah. make your life here better? Exactly, here? yeah. So but true. Be, I think it's just all about being present. People aren't present enough. They're either living mm -hmm. in the future when they will be happy. Or, or in the past. The past. <laughs> And then right now they can't focus mm -hmm. and then yeah. and that's the sad part but that's what exactly what why i started doing what i do is to help people focus on the right now like mm -hmm. something i teach just clients and people in general is just to win the day you're in mm -hmm. today is friday while we're recording this if i can win my day if i can complete my workout my tasks do this and this by the time my head hits the pillow at night i want to feel confident that i move forward even if it's just yeah. one inch exactly just and take a little bit of action day, you can still win the day mm -hmm. Even though something bad happened, because yeah. you move forward, progress every day. That is so true. So with all this um, knowledge and about also this guidance that you have, because you know what moves you, what keeps you going. Um, do you have a secret wish or something that really is on your mind that you want to achieve one day, um, where you feel like I cannot do it right now, but I want to do it in ten years, fifteen years, twenty years. Um, 
Yeah, so right now, because of what's going on in the world, at this part, we have the, uh, the pandemic and all the stuff happening, but <laughs> it's doing definitely something I would love to do is speaking on stages and having events where people are actually changing their life. Because I know that there's a lot of motivational events, speakers and all that, but that motivation only lasts 24 to 48 hours. They yeah. go to an event, they're like, yay. And then after that 24 hours, that high goes down and then they're alone at home. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, what now? Yeah. And then they're right back to not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Or So basically giving people the tools where they have step-by-step, -step. like, hey, for the next six months, do these things mm -hmm. and your life will change. Your body, your mind, your finances and everything. So taking that to a greater scale. Yeah. So you want to be on stage again. And yeah, I think so, you've so been on stage being, before. Being on stage where people are paranoid to go to events. Yeah. Like here in Florida, people don't care. We live like, but other places, people from other countries, not everyone is thinking like mm -hmm. that. So it's the fear and also you can't travel everywhere right now. But yeah. So making an impact in person, but giving people actual things that will change their life and not just get them motivated for 24 hours. Yeah. And you already have experience. Um, you just posted a while ago. It's already probably like two years ago. I cannot even remember. But um, you have been at a speaking event, but you also have been coached by. Yeah, Les Brown and uh, Tony yeah. Robbins. So I did Tony awesome. Robbins certification course. So. And the reason I did that is because growing up, my dad would play his tapes in the car and I would just listen and I was going through stuff and he held me and I was like, I want to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. Not just in his way to copy him, but to know like what works, the modalities, yeah. the techniques and so forth. Mm -hmm. But it was just interesting. And no matter what somebody's opinion is of him mm -hmm. or Les Brown or anybody, it's just at the end of the day, have these people help people get from point A to B? Yeah. If yes, and it's ethical, then I believe that that is something that can help others. Mm -hmm. so, that is I lot, so I think a lot cool. of people just have a lot of opinions, but they don't look at the facts. The yeah. facts are these people have helped millions of people, so there has to be something there instead yeah. of thinking that everything is That is so true. A scam all this. <laughs> but that's the sad part. People that always think like that, they usually stay in the same place because everything mm -hmm. is a scam or doesn't work and this and that. But the people who are open and then they take action, life is never the same. <laughs> so true. If you have a chance or one person that you could pick that you would love to have dinner with and ask, what would you ask and who would you ask? One person that I like to have dinner with and talk and ask. Can be anybody, like can be somebody as a, um, like a Simpson figure, can be a real person, somebody that you always, even as a kid, or still now look up to where you feel like if I sit down with this person I definitely go out of this dinner or lunch whatever and I gain so some what if, what if they're no longer here with us that's or fine that's that's, that's like, good okay. yeah okay the, the person would definitely be Bruce Lee because growing up doing martial arts doing mm -hmm. sports mm -hmm. but if I could only ask him one question What made you so focused? Mm -hmm. What made you so focused? Mm -hmm. So like with my experience reading his stuff growing up and watching his videos, he just impressed me more than anyone because mm -hmm. he seemed like someone who would be cool, calm and collective and in control no matter what is going on. Mm -hmm. So he's never yelling, never too low, just like right in that sweet spot, but so focused. So and it was the same way when he was fighting, his expressions were just really calm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he would make noises because of Hollywood movies and all that, but <laughs> Just as a person, just so calm and in control, but just his energy. Mm -hmm. Like, if you go to YouTube right now and type his interviews in, within 10 seconds, people will feel that energy. Yeah. So, and it all stemmed from focus. So asking him that would be amazing because yeah. I know that the impact he made on me, and it'd just be interesting on how somebody became the person they are. Maybe it's not happening in this life experience for you, <laughs> but when you cross over at some point, you're able yeah. to ask him all these questions. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. <laughs> as long as you stay here for a long, long time, we all cool yeah. with that. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I come to the last question and I would like to know, because there's a lot of people that I want to inspire with this post podcast, especially the younger generation, people that don't know what to do in the future, that's kind of lost, that have a passion, have a vision, but don't really know how to start, what to do, what do you want to tell our future kids in this world um, if you can give them an advice? 
What I would say is most importantly, do what will make you happy and what you're passionate about. So just because mom, dad, brother, neighbor, teacher, cousin, preacher, whoever mm -hmm. says you're, you're good at this or you should do that because it's safer and it's good money, just because we live in this day and age, you can do anything. So figuring out step one, write down the question, write down what you're good at. Number two, what do people know me for? What do people know me for? So if somebody knows you for art, for fitness, for this mm -hmm. and that, and then number three, what am I passionate about? And then number four, what do I enjoy doing? Mm -hmm. And then with those questions, somebody can kind of pinpoint and look at it and be like, huh, I'm good at this, people know me for this, I like doing this, and then they can kind of put things together so they can at least have options. We're not gonna say that it's gonna be that perfect thing that they see, but at least they get clarity by knowing mm -hmm. what path should I take. Yeah. And you know what? I can be good at this mm -hmm. and, I, and I enjoy doing that. Well, yeah. Wow, there is a career with this. Mm -hmm. And that is a much better way to look at it than just saying, well, my dad wants me to be a lawyer. I, I don't want to be a lawyer. And then 15 years later, he's miserable. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it's just pursuing what you want. That exactly. would be my number one tip. That is <laughs> very true. Well, I came to the end of this very great interview i first of all thank you so much for your time and all your thank you, thank um, you. stories because there's always somebody out there feeling the same way how you felt as a kid and um, growing up having difficulties as well but still being on your path and you your own a martial arts guy because you focused yourself you manage your day very well i know you for so long now and I know that there's way bigger things to come for you and if somebody out there wants to learn more about Derek, check him out. Where can we find you Derek? They can find me on Instagram at fit with Derek and the number two fit with Derek two. Same thing on Facebook and on anything else is fit with Derek two or just my name Derek Johnson and I'll pop up but yeah I'll let to connect with people. and. I appreciate your time and having me on here. Of so course. And you have your own here. podcast now too as well, right? Thank you. Yeah, we're working on it. It hasn't been launched yet, but definitely coming soon this year. So definitely check him out. I'm super excited. I'm going to be the one of the first subscribers on your channel. Thank you, thank <laughs> Listen you. to your motivation, <laughs> kicking people's asses over audio. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. And yeah, I can't wait Not to see more. Not for the weak hearted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much. I wish you a beautiful rest of your Friday in Florida, Tampa. And thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your Friday, your weekend, and have fun out there. Hopefully, you guys don't have to wear the mask everywhere. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to burn this thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye-bye. Right, thank you for having me. Bye. Bye.